Contact Investigation, Part 5, First Meeting Role Play. Hello. This training will combine many of the elements that you have been learning. Bob and Sally will demonstrate a role play between a healthcare worker and a patient on their first in-home visit. Remember, it can be difficult for the patient to recall everyone they have shared air with in the last three months. Therefore, listen for clues of where you may encounter additional contacts. And observe items that could also point to opportunities in which air was shared with the patient while infectious. Okay, let's head over to the role play area. Who is it? The door is open. Just go ahead and come in. Hello, my name is Sally. I work with the Office of Public Health. I am here to speak with Bob. Are you Bob? Yes ma'am. That's me, Bob. Why don't you go ahead and sit down? Before I get a pain in my neck. Oh okay. Thank you very much. Is this chair okay? Fine. I just get a crick in my neck if I have to look up much. My house cleaner hasn't been here in a month. So I am stuck cleaning all the ceiling fans. Luckily she will be back soon. Oh wow. Well I am happy you let me know. So, I work in the tuberculosis program. Most people just say TB. We received information from Dr. George about your lung infection. How are you feeling? Oh yeah. It's been really hard. I was coughing up blood and felt really bad. But after two weeks in the hospital I feel much better. They told me someone would come to see me. I guess you're the one? Yes sir. I am the one. I will bring your medicine and observe while you take them. It's called DOT. It's a state policy to make sure we provide the best possible treatment for tuberculosis. I think they went over DOT in the hospital, right? That's correct. It stands for Directly Observed Therapy. I don't like it because I am a private person. But it'll be alright. Now, what else can I do for you? I am a busy man you know. Cut. Cut. So you both should have a mask on. He was only treated for two weeks so far and has positive smears. Make sure you always know as much about the tuberculosis infectiousness as possible ahead of time. Okay. Thank you Judy for that insight. We can now move on to contact tracing. Since TB is contagious, we need to make sure that no one else inhaled the TB bacteria. Just like sometime in your life you inhaled the TB bacteria from someone else. It is important that we find out who you may have shared air with. This is so if anyone else got infected then we can give them treatment before they get sick. Okay. That'll be easy. I live alone and I work part-time and have no friends. So basically I couldn't infect anyone. Oh, okay. I know we have all had less socializing since COVID. But let's just go through some questions to make sure. Okay? I value your time. So, first let's talk about your daily routine. Tell me about a typical day you have. Rodney wakes me up. You may have seen Rodney when you first got here. He's my cat dog. I take him outside for about 20 minutes. Then we come back in and make some coffee. Then I sit on the recliner and watch my shows. Then after Judge Julie I get up and take Rodney out again. I heat up one of those frozen meals and sit back down until bedtime. I told you. Boring. Actually, it sounds pretty great. It is so nice that you and Rodney have each other. You mentioned that you have coffee in the morning. I couldn't help but notice the donut box on the little table behind me. There is not much that is better than hot coffee and donuts, right? Yes. Especially when they are hot. But I only eat one each day. They gotta last a week until I get more. You aren't kidding. So you get donuts delivered weekly? No ma'am. Not delivered. I mean it's just that my sister drops them by on Mondays. She doesn't stay long because the kids have to get to school. Oh what a nice tradition. And you get to see the kids? That's great. How old are they? Well, little Chucky is five. He is a joker. And Susie is nine. She is my little princess but with a lion's roar. They are good kids. A lot better than my three ever were. I can tell you have so much love for those kids. Now I am going to go over a few things that I thought of while we spoke. I know when I first got here you mentioned that your house cleaner hadn't been here since last month. When was the last time she came over? And were you at home while she was here? Oh Samantha? She comes to clean every two weeks. 
She takes only about five hours. And she makes me laugh a lot. She is due back in another few days. Thank goodness. At this point there are a few people that may have been exposed to the TB bacteria. We will need to get them evaluated to make sure they did not get infected. If they did get infected then we have medicine that we can give them. That way the infection will not end up becoming active TB. Active TB is what you have. We want to prevent anyone else from getting so sick. The evaluation will consist of a blood test, or skin test, a chest x-ray, and review with our clinician. Do you want to follow me into this other room? I have Samantha's phone number in the address book. I take it you will be wanting to talk to her? I really don't want her to be mad at me if she got infected. Yes, I will need her name and a way to contact her. Oh wow. This is a cool room. Are you a bowler? I see that nice bowling ball. Yes, actually. I am quite the bowler. I can't wait to get back to it. Okay that's all I have. That's the end of our role play. Judy, should we go ahead and stop here? Yes. Great job. Cut. So one last thing. Everyone should have been looking for clues that would help us know what contacts may have been at the house. Who noticed the balloons? Was there a party recently? Where? When? How long? Who was there? From my count the people that are probably contacts at this point are the housekeeper, the sister, the niece and nephew. The wine glass near the heels belong to someone. So that's a potential talking point. And it gets our critical thinking going. So speaking about critical thinking. Who noticed that the patient lives in an apartment building? Remember the beginning scene? Where are some potential areas of shared air in apartment buildings? How about hallways? Elevators? Mailrooms? Workout areas? The talking points just go on and on. Remember that this was a role play with pretend characters. In a real life interview the pace would be slower. The masks would stay on if needed. And more time would be given to explore any clues or observations that could lead to more contacts. Don't forget to complete the assessment. The URL for the assessment is on the next screen.